Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to just look at some things that you should do prior to publishing your application. So let's say you want to publish your application on the Google Store, the Android Play Store. Then there are a few things that you need to do first and most important you need to thoroughly test your application and things you should check are like for example make sure obviously that your application works check it as much as possible check that when you turn your phone on its side and you go into landscape mode and back again that your application doesn't crash and check that if someone calls your phone while you're using the application check that that doesn't crash it check that you can switch to other applications and back again with, without your application either crashing or losing its state or anything like that. And also um, you should be aware that commercial kind of well companies that actually develop mobile phone software are never content just with testing on an emulator and neither should you be. You need to test it on at least one mo mobile phone but if um, ideally you should check it on lots of phones, different kinds of phones and a, a company that actually releases mobile phone software will do that, they'll have a bunch of different phones, different types and they'll check it on those. So I'd say at the minimum try like a couple of different emulators and your own phone but it's much better if you can test it on multiple phones whether that means giving the application to your friends or whatever. So let's say you've thoroughly tested your application, um, preferably on a bunch of different devices, because the emulators can never be relied upon to fully, faithfully emulate a real phone. And you tested it on multiple em emulators. A few more things to check are in your manifest, check that you've set the user's SDK correctly. So this should specify the minimum SDK version, which you should have tested that your your application can work with and also the target SDK version the one that ideally the user would have for your application to run and if you set minimum SDK to anything greater than zero it's going to limit the number of phones that your application can run on but you don't want to say that your application can run on SDK version 1 if in fact it doesn't because that will just get you bad reviews in the Google market you might want to add things like support screens to say which kind of screens it can run on and also check your permissions. So I'm requesting write external storage here which I need for this application and you should, you should specify as few permissions as possible because these can put users off installing your application but if you need a permission you have to request it otherwise your application simply won't work. You, um, you might also need to specify this uh, where are we, uses feature node on your, in your manifest on the, the main kind of screen of your manifest here uh, which I actually forgot I need for this application android.hardware.camera and that kind of says if I say set this to false, I'm saying that ideally you should have a camera to run this application as well. Now, um, strictly speaking, uh, what you list under permissions that determines what your what your application can literally do on your phone. While here, um, the uses feature node, this this kind of just uh, informs um, some external entity which in this case will be the Google Play Store if I upload this application that your application would like to use this feature and both both the, the users feature and the permission nodes they can both affect whether a particular user with a particular phone can see your application in the Google on the Google market but so you, you want to add as few as possible um, but of both of these and but you need to add enough to cover whatever your application needs and does and the other thing to check is 
if you go to application in a manifest, check that debuggable is set to false because you don't want to release a debug version of an application. And it goes without saying, make sure your application is um, compiles properly and doesn't have any um, too many warnings or anything crazy like that in it. Although the odd warning or two is is no problem in general because you can get warnings just because you've, for example, um, you've not declared a, um, a what do you call it a um, serialization ID in your application, which you, which you absolutely don't need, but Eclipse will warn you if you don't have one. Anyway, that's it basically, um, and the take home message is test thoroughly, check your users feature and your permissions that you've requested, and make sure debuggable is switched off. And that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.